الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا أبو القاسم المصطفى العمين وأهل أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين Dear respected viewers of Imam Hussein Television Network brothers and sisters in Islam indeed ladies and gentlemen any non-Muslim viewers watching I welcome you back to this very short series in which we are reflecting upon topics pertaining to the martyrdom of Fatima to Zahra salam. For any non-Muslims who are watching, you don't know who Fatima, Fatima to Zahra salam is, then unfortunately this program is probably not going to be very informative for you. And perhaps you should refer back to a more introductory briefing of information pertaining to her, perhaps Wikipedia or what you find on the internet. For all of you who have been joining me for the previous episodes, and indeed those Shia viewers who may be tuning in for the first time, I'd like to welcome you back to this last episode of this short series in which we discuss topics pertaining to the martyrdom of Fatima, inspired by this period of time and the seriousness that this particular period of time brings. One of the things that I wish to clarify in this series is there's been a propensity to argue that there's a shared agreed upon narration that Fatima السلام, is a part of me and that whoever angers her also angers me. Indeed, many of our friends who happen to be Sunni have correctly pointed out that this particular narration comes part and parcel of a much longer narration in which it is implied that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam had actually angered Our Lady Fatima and this they claim is done by proposing to the daughter of Abi Jahl now of course whilst that particular narrative is entirely rejected by ourselves and the few narrations which do exist in our books pertaining to this matter have come from entirely Sunni Turk, meaning that it's Rawaya Dakhila, it's an inserted report from the books of others. We reject this report entirely. And yet, nonetheless, there is a valid point to be made that how can you dare have the audacity to use this Rawaya as a hujja? when this riwayah itself would seem to implicate Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam. Now of course, there are those who come forward and would say that, look, I'm not interested in the entire narration. I'm utilizing what's in your books as a standard. And whilst this approach may yield some fruit, whilst this approach in a very tit-for-tat rhetorical argument might hold some weight. We nonetheless need to see with the eyes of empathy and the eyes of being able to see things from the lens of others why this could be a problematic approach. And so when it comes to that one narration, that one narration which is found within the books of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah pertaining to the martyrdom, pertaining, sorry, to the anger of Fatima, namely the one reported in Sahih al-Bukhari, reported from Maswar ibn al-Makhrama, I would suggest that the most fruitful thing that we, we could do at this period of time, for the sake of academic honesty, objectivity, is to not use this narration whatsoever. Why? Because I believe that generally the, the brothers who do look into this would become fixated 
and entrapped into looking at how this does not implicate Amir al-Mu'mineen That's the first point. There might be some who ask, therefore, is there any of a ruwayat which seem to suggest and seem to give us the same madhameen, the same general import, the same general quality? And generally we do find that that is the case, and I'd like to quote some of those reports. For indeed to cite these reports would be something much better and much more academically integral. It would have the integrity that we're looking for in discussions, the integrity that we would hope that the du'at who follow other sects, may Allah increase them and us in guidance and guide us all to the straight path, would have one day discussed with us. We find it is narrated in the Mustadrak of Hakim and Naysaburi. 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 Um, Hakim and Naysaburi, I believe, is the pronunciation that they like to go with. Who has a famous book called Al Mustadrak Al Sahih. I know that this, hearing the name of that book, would give some people the goosebumps of, oh no, is he just quoting anything from the Mustadrak of Sahih? So I'd ask you to. Bear with me patiently. Not every rawaya in the Mustadrak of a Sahihain is unauthentic. It is narrated. Qal haddathana Abu Abbas Muhammad bin Yaqub thana al Hassan ibn Ali bin Afan al Amari. Wa akhbarana Muhammad ibn Ali bin Dahim bil Kufa. Thana Ahmed bin Hatim bin Abi Gharza. Qala. Thana Abdullah Muhammad bin Salim, Thana Hussein ibn Zayd bin Ali, An Amr ibn Ali, An Jafar ibn Muhammad, An Abihi, An Ali ibn al Hussein, An Abihi, An Ali, alayhi salatu was salam. Or Ravi al Huan as the text says, Qal, Qal al Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa ala, li Fatima. إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْضَبْ لِغَضْبِكِ وَيَرْفَ لِرَضَاكِ That namely Allah is angered by your anger and is pleased by your pleasure. ثُمَّ أَلَقَى عَلَى الْحَدِيثِ بِقَوْلِهِ وَهَذَا حَدِيثٌ صَحِيحٌ الْإِسْنَادِ وَلَمْ يَخْرَجَاهُ Namely, this narration is sahih in its sanad. And Bukhari and Muslim did not bring this narration out. We find that Al Haythami in his Majma al Zawaid states, قال, An Ali Qal, Qal Rasul Allah, Inna Allah Yagdab li Ghadabaki wa Yarva li Ravaki. Same narration, but in Majma al Zawaid. Wa Allaka al Al Hadith bi Kawlihi, Rawahu wa Tabarani wa Isnaduhu Hassan. Namely, at Tabarani has reported this report, and his report is Hassan. وَخْرَجُهُ أَبُو النَّعِيمِ الْإِسْفَهَانِ فِي مَعْرَفَةِ الصَّحَابَةِ حَدَّثَنَا أَبُو بَكْرَ الطَّلْحِي ثَنَا محمد بن عبد الله الحفرمي ثَنَا عبد الله بن محمد بن سالم حدثنا حسين بن زيد بن علي بن الحسين عن علي بن عمر بن علي عن جافر بن محمد عن أبيه عن علي بن الحسين عن حسين بن علي عن علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله إنه قال يا فاطمة إن الله تعالى يغضب لغضبك ويرفع لرفاك. namely same matter Allah عز وجل is pleased at your pleasure and angered by your anger. وألق عليه بقوله تفرد بالرواية هذا الحديث الإترة الطيبة خلفهم أن سلفهم حتى ينتهي إلى النبي. That this report has been reported by the blessed إترة, the progeny of the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله خلفهم, namely those who came after the متأخرين from them, from their سلف, until the narration goes back to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله. The famous compiler of Sira. As-Salihi al-Shami, in his famous book, 
سبل الهدى والرشاد هي سيز رواء التابراني بإسناد حسن وابن الصني في معجمه وابن وأبو سعيد النيسابوري في الشرف عن علي إن الله إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله قال لي فاطمة إن الله تعالى يغضب لغضبك ويرفع لرفاك namely verily Allah gets angry at your anger and is pleased by your pleasure كما جعل المحب الطبري بابا في كتابه دخائر العقبة اسمه ذكر ما جاء إن الله عز وجل يغضب لغضبها حيث ذكر فيه الحديث بقوله عن علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام إن الرسول الله قال صلى الله عليه وآله يا فاطمة إن الله عز وجل يغضب لغضبك ويرفى لرفاك أخرجه أبو سعد في شرف النبوة والإمام علي بن موسى الرفا في مسنده وابن مثنى في معجمه وغيرهم من الذين أخرجوه في كتبهم ومصنفاتهم ونصوا على صحته واعتبروه عندهم namely محب الدين الطبري in his famous book الدخائر mentions that this report has been reported and has been authenticated by numerous different scholars interestingly enough he mentions Ali ibn Musa al-Riva alayhi salam in his musnad now Muhib al-Din al-Tabari is not a Shi'i scholar he is indeed a Sunni scholar of course there are a couple of issues we want to look at when looking at this narration because I know that it's not been free of assaults and attacks by those who wish to deny it. Let us quote from two particular doubters of this narration and see what their doubts are. And inshallah ta'ala, given that they are respected ulama of the Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we wish to afford them that level of respect when we deal with their claims. The respected scholars are of such. Number one, Ibn Taymiyyah al-Harrani, the famous author of the book Minhaj al-Sunnah al-Nabawiyyah. And number two, Shams al-Din al-Zahabi. Shams al-Din al-Zahabi, of course, being one of her pillars in Ilm al-Rajal and one of her famous hadith scholars, of course, most famous in this context, particularly pertaining to this narration, for his work, Talkhis al-Mustadraq. Ibn Taymiyyah states, وَالَّذِي قَالْ فِي مِنْهَاجِهِ This is the following what Ibn Taymiyyah states in his minhaj. أما قوله ورأوا جميعا أن رسول الله أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله قال يا فاطمة إن الله يغضب لغضبك ويرفى لرفاك فهذا كذب منه ما رواه هذا أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله ولا ولا يعرف هذا في الشيء من كتب الحديث المعروفة ولا له إسناد معروف أن النبي لا صحيح ولا حسن. سبن من تيمية states that this is apparent and manifest lies. For this narration, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, is not known to have a sanad going back to the Prophet, neither Sahih nor Hassan, nor is it to be found in one of the books of the famous books of Hadith. As for Shams al Din al-Zahabi, for he recounts after narrating this Hadith in his famous. تلخيص المستدرق بل حسين بن زيد منكر الحديث but the narrator حسين بن زيد is منكر الحديث now admittedly I always find it problematic when a Shi'i tries to correct a Sunni hadith pillar on the science of narration and so what I'm going to say here is I would like anyone who's a Sunni and is an expert on the science of narration to come forward and if this is inaccurate, I will publicly concede that this is a mistake. I'm very open to that fact. I could be making a mistake in this particular tasheer. However, I'd like for the argument to be heard, inshallah ta'ala. As for Ibn Taymiyyah's claim, then this is something which is easily established that what he's saying is not true. For we find that we've already mentioned some of the famous hadith books, Mustadraq, 
We have Tabarani in his Mu'jam al-Kabir narrating it. We have Ibn Abi Asim in his Ahad wal Muthanna narrating it. We have Ibn Asakir in his Tarikh Madinat Damashq narrating it. We have Abu Ya'la al mawsili in his Mu'jam narrating it. And of course, when we have Mustadrak, Mu'jam al Tabarani, Al Ahad wal Muthanni, and all these other books, then we see that it definitely has been narrated. So at least part of Ibn Taymiyyah's claim is untrue. Now, of course, we do have to appreciate that these people were writing in a time when they didn't have access to all the available books. That could very, very well be the case. And generally, you'll find such claims made in the books of all sects where they radically just deny something outright. But sadly, when it's done by the Shia sect, it's considered to be a natural act of lying. So I don't want to comment too much on that. As for the words of a Wahhabi, then we find that he derives the narration due to the Nurawi, namely Hussein ibn Zayd al-Alawi, being Munkir al-Hadith. Now, what Munkir al-Hadith in this context, brothers and sisters, means is that they do infirad of narrations, that their narrations are isolated. Now, of course, what's quite problematic here is you can't just drop this Rawi because he has isolated reports. Particularly when we find that some of their great pillars in the science of Rajal have authenticated this man and given him very excellent tawthiq. For example, we find that Dara Qutni in his Su'alat Lil Barqani states Al-Darakutni testifies that Zayd ibn al-Husayn is, sorry, al-Husayn ibn Zayd is thiqa. Ibn Uday in his Kamil also considers him to be reliable, for he states, وَجُمْلَ حَدِيثِهِ أَنْ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ وَأَرْجُ إِنْهُ لَا بَعْسْ بِهِ إِلَّا إِنِّي وَجَدْتُ فِي بَعْفْ حَدِيثِهِ نَقَارًا Namely, I found in some of his narrations, Nakara. But, أَرْجُ Just to quote what he says once more, أَرْجُ إِنْهُ لَا بَعْسْ بِهِ I find him to be not problematic. وَوَثَّقَهُ إِبْنْ هَجْرُ الْأَسْقَلَانِي in his Taqrib for we find him stating Hussein ibn Zayd ibn Ali ibn al-Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib Saduq rubma akhta min al-thamina mata wa lahu thamanun sana fi hadood al-tis'in namely he's reliable he's thiqa but occasionally he may make mistakes now of course when we see that he's been authenticated by such great scholars, what do we make of a Wahhabi saying that he's Nakarat al-Hadith, therefore he's rejected? You see, here we'd like to apply the classical principle of saying that when it comes to Tad'if of a Rawi, when it comes to weakening a Rawi, we don't opt with the weakening to be stronger than the Wathaqa, or the strengthening, or vindication, unless the weakening is what we call jarh, mufassr. What do we mean by that? Something which has been explained. A jarh which has explanation to it and a reasoning is given. We find Al Khatib al Baghdadi states, Sami' to Qavi Abu Tayyib al Tahir bin Abdullah bin Tahir al Tabari, Yakul, La yukbal al jarh illa mufassaran. We don't accept jarh, namely attacks, or weakening, ta'an, in a rawi, except if it's mufassr, explained. وَلَيْسَ قَوْلْ أَسْحَابِ الْحَدِيثِ فُلَانْ ضَعِيف وَلَا فُلَانْ لَيْسَ بِشَيْءِ مِمَّا يُوجَبْ جَرْحِهِ وَرَدْ خَبْرِهِ And even our companion saying that fulan is ضَعِيف or fulan لَيْسَ بِشَيْءِ does not necessitate frog away someone's reports when they've been strengthened by other people. Why? Let's continue what he says. 
وإنما كان كذلك لأن الناس اختلفوا فيما يفسق به فلا بد من ذكر سببه لينظر هل هو فسق أم لا and that's because people differed in regards to what is considered fisk here. And that's why, when it comes to this, we need to see the reason. Is it genuinely fisk or not? وَكَذَلِكْ قَالَ أَصْحَابَنَا إِذَا شَهَدَ رَجَلًا بِأَنَّ هَذَا الْمَا نَجِسْ لَمْ تُقْبَلْ شَهَادَتَهُمَا حَتَّى يُبَيِّنَ سَبَبَ النَّجَاسَ And he says that some of our companions have even said if two men say that the water in front of you is ritually impure, don't accept their testimony until they tell you the reason for that impurity. فَإِنَّ النَّاسِ أَخْتَلَفُوا فِي مَا يُنْجَسْ بِهِ الْمَا For the people have differed in regards to what makes my najis, what makes water najis. وَفِي نَجَاسَ الْوَاقَعَ فِيهِ قُلْتْ وَهَاذَ الْقَوْلُ هُوَ الصَّوَابِ عِنْدَنَا And this saying is the more deserving saying according to us. وَأَلَيْهِ ذَهَبَ الْعِمَّةُ مِنَ الْحُفَّاظِ الْحَدِيثِ وَنُقَادِهِ مِثْلْ مُحَمَّدْ إِبْنِ إِسْمَعِيلِ الْبُخَارِي وَمُسْلِمْ إِبْنِ حَجَاجِ النَّيْسَابُورِ وَغَيْرُهُمَا فَإِنَّ الْبُخَارِي قَدْ أَحْتَجْ بِجَمَاءَ سَبَقَ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ تَآن فِيهِمْ وَجَرْحْ لَهُمْ So Bukhari has accepted people that were previously condemned. So we see that particularly when it comes to this issue, we need to be particularly diligent and we can't just take these testimonies as if it's something very, very simple. We also find that Abu Hatim, Ibn Abi Hatim, Ar-Razi, he states in regards to Hussein bin Zayd, قُلْتُ لِأَبِي مَا تُقُولْ فِيهِ عَيَّ الْحُسَيْنَ بِنْ زَيْدِ فَهَرَقَ يَدُهُ وَقَلْبَهَا وَقَلَّبَهَا So he moved his hand and then flipped it. يَعْنِي تُعْرَفْ وَتُنْكَرْ Now of course this particular jarh from Ibn Abi Hatim falls into the same problem because it's not explained jarh. And therefore, we don't take this to be something which overcomes the reliability of this particular reporter. But that being said, we find that when it comes to this particular issue, there are numerous other narrations which again give us the same mavamin. For example, we find that when it comes to looking at this particular narration, we find one of the narrations which is utilized is the narration which states, Fatima, inna Fatima bivatan minni yu'vini ma avaha wa yansibani ma ansabaha. Or we find, for example, Fatima shajana minni yubsitani ma yubsitaha وَيَخْبَضَنِي مَا يَخْبَضَهَا But Fatima is like an intrinsic link to me. Whatever makes her feel مبسوط, whatever makes her feel, whatever makes her feel an expanse, makes me feel that expanse too. Whatever makes her feel that contraction, makes her, me feel that contraction too. We find that these narrations are numerous. And so, my brothers and sisters, there is no need for us in any way, shape or form to depend upon the famous narration in Bukhari just because we feel that this particular narration will have that explanatory power and will have that emotional value. We need to be with people who don't use these emotions blindly and we don't just utilize arguments for the sake of utilizing them. Now, there's something I wish to quickly deal with just before this episode ends, which I think is of the utmost importance. When it comes to the narration of Fatima السلام, dying angry with Abu Bakr ibn Abi Kuhafa, and this narration is of course found in Bukhari, and it is, of course, narrated by Aisha, the daughter of 
Abu Bakr herself. When it comes to this particular narration, what we find is that there is a particular claim that this narration is from the Idraj of a Zuhri. When it comes to this claim, we need to ask the following questions. When it comes to the Idraj of a Zuhri, there must be a reason by which we determine that this is Idraj. And what we mean by the Idraj of Zuhri is some people claim that Zuhri took the original narration and at the very end of the narration, he inserted this line and Fatima died angry with Abu Bakr. Now, of course, what's particularly problematic is this needs to be proven. This needs to be proven. And when we look at all the varying narrators who do narrate from a Zuhri, be they Saleh, or be they Aqil bin Khalid, or be they others, such as Ma'amr bin Rashid, or Shuaib bin Abi Hamza, we saw no reason for them to have in narrated something which is a Draj unless they were really bad rawat who were unable to distinguish between this particular phenomenon. So a brief istiqra upon the rawat from a zuhri seems to indicate that this is not idraj. But furthermore, what we find other than that is that there are other narrations which actually do include this same mavmoon. And that's why we find that other narrations which don't have zuhri in the particular narration are considered to be reliable, contain the fact that Fatima got angry with Abu Bakr as well, prior to death. Lastly, we have that famous report which is called Sahih Mursal, which many of our Sunni friends like to quote. Of course, it's not hujja upon us, and so it's not really our problem. But the narration seems to indicate that she became pleased with him prior to dying, after being angry with him. Now the question is, why would you be pleased with someone after being angry with them if you were never angry with them in the first place? I think, inshallah ta'ala, if there's anything we want to detract from this brief episode, my brothers and my sisters, I want you all to take note of the fact that there's no need for us to depend upon cheap polemics. There's no need for us to even engage in these polemics. When it comes to these things, learn your aqidah, learn your deen, and stay out of this game of trying to convince others. If you're trying to have a legitimate conversation with someone who's Sunni, then sit down for that conversation. It doesn't need to be heated. Present what you have, hear what they have to say, and listen to both cases with an open mind. But know that Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam the daughter of a prophet died as a shahida, and that the report seemed to suggest she died upset and she died mavluma. We want to ask what is it that led Lady Fatima alayhi salam to die? And why did she die at such a young and tender age? These are all areas surrounded in a great deal of mystery. But they're not areas which I think I need to explore. For indeed, I think the average khatib on the mimbar has done so. And I pray that these short topics which I've opened up in these past few episodes have been beneficial for you. And please, once more, dear viewers, as I always say, if I've said anything that's offended anyone, then please do forgive me. And all praise is due to Allah, and only the mistakes have been mine. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق>